Okay, here's something a little different. My friend on a farm, while hoeing up a paddock, which was nothing but sand, weeds and grass, found a large rock in the middle of the paddock that they dug up with their hoe, and he smashed a bit off for me to have. He seems to think it's a meteorite. Now, I don't know what it is, but um, that's what it looks like. I'm not sure if it's a meteorite or what it is, but uh, he seems to think, well, it had to come from somewhere and there's no other rocks in the paddock, so it must have fell out of the sky, apparently. And this is one piece of it. It was about the size of a football. It's very brittle, very shiny. Its weight is probably between aluminium and steel. Um, there's not really a lot more I can say about it. Um, the first thing I did try was to see if it was magnetic. So we have a big strong magnet here. As you can see, it's an N52 and it is in no way magnetic at all. So the next thing I tried to see if it was conductive and found out to my surprise that it is. Um, and it does have some resistance across the rock. But further experimenting showed something very odd about this resistance. And um, what we're going to do now is set this rock up in this uh, test jig here. And um, we're going to send some power through it. Run that little motor from our power supply over here. Then we're going to use this voltmeter and check the voltages all around different points of our little rock here. And then we're going to get this little LED test gizmo that I've made up and uh, check it out with that. But first we're going to clamp it in here and uh, hook up our digital multimeter and check the resistance. And uh, then we'll go ahead and um, do some uh, measuring with the voltmeter in different places around our little rock. Space rock apparently. And uh, I'll show you what I found quite interesting with this. Back shortly. Okay, so our rock's set up in a little test jig. I've tried to clamp it as far away or on each end of the rock. And as close to the edge as I possibly could. So we got uh, most of our rock as our resistor. Um, we have our meter set on ohm. So first thing we're going to do is check our meter by placing it across a 100 ohm resistor this is awfully trick one handed ok so that's on there 99.4.3 yeah so pretty close I would say that's um, an accurate reading for our El Cheapo 100 ohm resistor so we might know the meter's correct so um, now simply going to use these two steel brackets as our connection points for all our tests um, which of course is clamped fairly tightly on the edges of the rock. So we have about 49 ohms of resistance across our rock. Alright, so it's um, nothing too fantastic I know what we're going to do now is I'm going to hook that motor up um, in series with our amp meter, our rock resistor, space rock, and of course our power supply. That's a 24 volt motor that one, so we'll be running it at the full 24 volts. So um, I'll get that all set up and we'll be back. Okay, so we're all set up here ready to go. I've put a large cap parallel with the motor, as you can see, to uh, smooth out any of them nasty little spikes and make readings hard and the negative side of our cap come motor terminal is of course going to the ground side of our power supply it's on 24 volts and the positive side is going through our amp meter 
and into this side of our rock which I've marked plus and of course we go through the rock which I've marked negative on this side back out into the positive side of the cap which of course is a positive leg of the motor okay so um, let's switch that on little motors off and running and we are drawing uh, 567 68 milliamps um, at 24 volts so what we have here is of course our voltmeter it's going to turn on to DC volts the ground side of our meter once we get done tangled and of course we'll go on the negative side here and if we place I hate that light we place the positive side on the positive side we have 8.59 volts place it on the rock here 4.88 volts I place it on the rock right next to the negative terminal 4.76 volts right over here near the positive terminal 4.91 so no matter where we go on our rock wondering if I can uh, somehow put this meter where we can see it as we're testing that light is a proper pain in the ass So you would think, I mean, if we put our meter on here, of course we get diddly squat. If we put it ever so close to our terminal here, you would think we'd get pretty much a diddly squat. But we get 4.75 volts right over the back side of the rock here, 4.81. Now even if I go in front, of our negative side of our resistor here we're still getting 4.78 volts no matter where we go we get pretty much the same moving right over the back side underneath and if we can get it right up close. So um, the voltage all around the rock really doesn't change. Even right next to our connection point here, where we have zero volts, I can put it so very close to it, it would be less than a mil there. light is going to go. We still have 4.8 volts. So it doesn't seem to really make any difference. Whereabouts on the rock, we place our multimeter, it's always around 4.8 volts, which is pretty cool. So now what we're going to do is just get rid of that. We're going to give our little LED tester here, which I zipped up really quickly. Our white lead is the positive, so we'll put it on the positive side. And the black lead here with our probe. That's of course our negative side. And as you can see, the light works. No matter where, we place it on the rock. Even at the uh, back end, it's been a pain. Oh, now we're grinding away the wire with the motor. Even behind 
a negative side because we know if we put our uh, multimeter on there we'll get nothing from the light. But if I go behind the connection point you can still see we have power. No matter where I put it on this U-Butte space rock, the voltage is pretty much the same and the uh, power to drive the LEDs. You can see how close I have it there. I'm right next to the positive terminal there. As you can see, all the lights are still bright. And even if we go way back behind our connection point, the lights are still bright. So, um, a very interesting rock. Doesn't seem to uh, make any difference how close we are to either one of the um, connection points to our space rock. We get power of about the same amount all around that rock. Um, so yeah, thought I would uh, just make a video up about that because um, what we normally should have is from this point here where there is no voltage difference to this point here you would think the voltage would slowly climb as we go further across our resistive rock but um, as you've seen it doesn't matter where you go the light still works everywhere even on the back side of our connection point. Interesting stuff. And um, that does warm up. I'll give you an idea. Our bench temperature is 23.2 degrees. Now the rock is a bit shiny, but nonetheless. It's uh, 36. 34 degrees. Now the rock is quite reflective so temperature uh, reading might be too accurate. Nonetheless, I can feel but that rock is uh, quite hot. Yes, it's definitely um, around the 40 degree mark. As our gauge was showing us on the last reading. 43, 42.8. Yeah, so around 43 degrees. And uh, our bench temperature is uh, 23.6. So, um, very interesting uh, little rock, that one. If anyone knows what it is, let me know. But um, I haven't seen anything that looks quite like that before. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. And, um, that's our little space rock. Cheers guys.